put God first in life. Bittersweet memories. We stay and abide in the presence of God by simply being aware of Him throughout our day. There are many ways to do this prayer, worship, reading the word, praying with brothers and sisters in Christ, evangelizing, etc. Now notice all of these have one thing in common. They require awareness of the person of Jesus. You see, you may be in the presence of the Lord and it seems like everything around you is being torn apart or shattered. I want to read 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 to you. It says, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. You see, God sent Elijah in his presence. He said, go stand on this mountain. And after he was in the presence of the Lord standing on the mountain, here came a powerful wind that tore the mountain apart. But did you see that even though Elijah was on that mountain, Elijah was not affected nor consumed by the wind. He was not affected nor consumed by the earthquake, by the fire. And after he had remained and endured those experiences and those trials, the Lord spoke to him. So it may seem like things are being torn apart, shattered in your life. Remain in the presence of the Lord because God is getting ready to speak to you. He's saying, I'm not in the wind. I'm not in the earthquake. I'm not in the fire, but you are still in my presence. Yes, you may be experiencing this. Yes, you may be experiencing that, but you are still in my presence and I'm getting ready to speak. So remain in his presence. In the truth and the goodness of who God is, every single day he offers us gifts and those gifts are supposed to help us get through our day. Those gifts like love, those gifts like peace, the gifts like grace. And too often times we get in such a rush and are so concerned about our to-do list, we forget to receive one of those gifts from God, that gift that would allow us to have a better day than we had. So in this moment, just take in a deep breath and receive a gift that God has for you. And then you can go throughout your day. I'm gonna tell you how to start a relationship with God. I've said this a thousand times and I will continue to say this because it's so important. A relationship, any relationship is built off of three things, communication, spending time with the person and getting to know the person. And that is the exact same thing with God. Communicate with him, pray to him, just talk to him. Sometimes we overcomplicate prayer when it's just talking to God. It's talking to him about your day. It's talking to him about what you're going through, your struggles and repenting of your sins that you have done. Asking for forgiveness, just talking to God. Next is getting to know God. How do you start a relationship or how do you even trust someone that you don't know? So open the Bible. 2 Timothy 3.16 talks about how that's God's breathed out word. You want to know who God is? Look in the Bible because that's where he's revealed his character in. And spend time with him. It is so important to have a daily routine so you have motivation to do this. Some days I wake up and I don't want to read my Bible. I'm lacking motivation. But the routine and spending time with God is what motivates me. So I hope this helped. God will find you. Sunland Apple IPTV Entertainment Perfected Faces Done by Candy. See, I didn't find God in the church. In fact, I didn't find God at all. He found me. He met me in a place where I was so broken I couldn't get up. And when you're loved like that, it will shock you. Whoever needs to hear this, listen now. God did not bring you this far to leave you. He did not bring you this far to... The scripture says that he that started a good work, a good work, he starts a good work, he's faithful to see it through till the end. The work that the Lord has started, has started in you is a good work. And he will surely see it through to the end. He, said, he says, he makes all things work together for good. 
for those that love love the Lord and are called according to his purpose his purpose you did not find God contrary to um, you know to to the to the to the way it explained today that oh I found God I found God you did not find God God was not lost you was you was lost God found you and so if he finds you he is big enough strong and strong enough and able enough to secure you and to keep you you've got to believe that in the book of Matthew Matthew chapter 6 verse 44 it says no one can come to you unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day Christ is saying that if the father did not send you if the father did not um, send you to him you will not be able to know him so God found you so you've got to believe that if he found you and he's brought you this far then he's faithful enough he's able enough and he's more than willing to see you through to the very end because he does a good work he doesn't he doesn't um, do unfinished business no the Lord finishes his work perfectly the book of Ephesians 2 verses uh, 10 says that um, we are God's masterpiece we are God's masterpiece listen to these words created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared for us a long time ago so before you were even born there was a preparation for you you've got to believe that because it's true before you even says before you were formed in your mother's womb I knew you I'd set you apart right so there's a preparation for you there's a plan for you there's a purpose for you there's a there's a path for you and, and you are a masterpiece that is going through to perfection. You will be perfected. You're going through a process that is going to take you to perfection. The Lord did not bring you this far to leave. God wants to be pursued. He's a relational God. He's, he's a jealous God. He wants your heart. He wants your devotion. He wants your passion. In fact, he gives us an incredible promise in, in Jeremiah 29, verse 13. He says this, God says, you will seek me. And what happens when you seek me? When you seek me, he says, you'll find me. It's a promise. If you pursue God, he will reveal himself to you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, God says, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. When you draw near to him, when you pursue him, when you crave him, when you hunger for him, God loves to be pursued and he loves to reveal himself to you. To speak to people about a peck. So when you look at a peck, it has the silver spring in the center. Yes. A peck cannot function without the silver spring in the center. If I remove the silver spring in the center, it will be just two pieces of planks that mean nothing. Same yeah. thing with your life. If I remove God at the center of your heart, you'll be a meaningless person. You wouldn't know your purpose. You wouldn't know your calling. You wouldn't know who you are. Number two, when you hang clothes on a line, why do you put a peg? You put a peg so that in back a zinga or a zinga goes. Same thing with your life. Why do you receive God in your life? You receive God so that you don't fall into depression, anger, anxiety, bitterness, jealousy. That is why you need God in your life so that you can be who you are and know your identity and purpose. Number three, if I remove the clothes from the pegs, so that is why it's very important to stick on to the Lord. Number four, Apex does not discriminate Sisley Rad. It doesn't matter whether you are rich, whether you are poor, whether you are filthy, whether you are dirty. Apex job is to hold you back. It does not matter who you are. Apex is going to hold you. Isn't this is the same thing that God says? Come as you are. It doesn't matter how broken. It doesn't matter what happened in your life. God is saying that just come as you are. Right now, during this lockdown, there's somebody that's broken. It's saying that. I have no future. There's no hope. But I want to tell you, God is saying, come as you are. And the word fear, says Lirato, the word fear, this word, fear, it has two meanings for me, says Lirato. It says first meanings from the enemy. And people will say, forget 
everything and run away from the promises that God has for you. It's saying forget. But I want you to turn it around today. I don't care what situation you're facing today. Turn it around. Face everything and rise. I don't care what situation you've been through. A lot of people, they might have thrown stones. Dogs do not bark at a car that stands still. But dogs bark at a car that's moving. So what I'm telling you, run. Hustle. It's difficult. Today I'm an author, Sister Lirato. My friends, when I shut my... You could trade eyes with me Because there's complexities in complexion But your skin is glow like diamonds Dig me like the earth you be giving birth To everything alive, baby, know your worth I love everything about you from your nappy curls To every single curve, your body natural Same skin that was broken, me the same skin taking over Most things are the focus, you But when you're in the room, they know it's you Your story, you dance and they can't control you. They watch and they all adore you. 